Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This will be the conclusion of the Tabernacle series. If you are interested in a more in-depth study of Jesus as high priest, Jesus as king, uh, click on my name. You'll go to the home page uh, at the bar towards the top. It'll say playlists. Click on playlists. And then uh, you'll see the playlist called Who is Jesus? I uh, did uh, several hours of study of the different offices of Christ as prophet, priest, and king. High priest and king. Also, if anybody's interested, I have a playlist on the Wilderness series, which is going to be the future of the church. But few get it. You know, Jesus warned over and over about not being deceived. And the only way we can not be deceived is to, well, not just read the Lord's will, but study it. And what I love about the King James is generally the King James interprets the King James. It just, you know, it explains itself if you let it. All right, so we are going to read the last three chapters of the book of Hebrews, uh, starting in chapter 11. And this will be the conclusion of the Tabernacles series. But before we do that, there's a few things that I want to read. All right, let's go to Psalms 106. Now, Israel was told not to intermarry with the Canaanites. And uh, Phinehas was, uh, I'm not sure if he was a Levite or not. I think he was, but without going into the genealogy, he uh, caught a man on top of a Canaanite woman having fun. And uh, he was not very happy about it. So he took a spear and put it through the man and the woman's belly. Okay? And in Psalms 106, verse 30, Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment. Yeah, he took a spear and put it through both their bellies when they were uh, having a little bit of fun. And so the plague was stayed, and that was counted unto him for righteousness and unto all generations forever. Uh, so, you know, Phineas was given a priesthood because of that. But uh, you won't hear that. You will never hear that preached in a denominational church. No, 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 no. We can't have that. Oh, God, can't, God changed his mind. Now he wants the Canaanites to have salvation if you listen to the denominational church churches they hide that stuff really well you know there's a reason why all throughout the old testament it said don't marry them oh but they were evil yeah they were born evil go to genesis 15 verse 1 after these things the word of the lord came unto abram in a vision saying fear not abram I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me hast thou given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, 
so shall thy seed be. Now those of you that live in the city, you can look up in the sky and you don't see that many stars. But let me tell you something. You go out in the desert, middle of the desert where there's no cities for 50 miles in any direction, and you look into the Milky Way, and you know why it's called the Milky Way? Because it looks like white milk. There's that many stars. You can't even count them. There's that many. Supposedly, there's millions and millions of them. I don't know. God must have really been busy. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he, Abraham, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. You see, Abraham believed the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay, so let's take a look at Hebrews 11 with that in mind. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith, uh, you know, faith is just basically, I guess, a synonym for believing, right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. But before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not yet, uh, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. What is our righteousness? It's by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And what, uh, what city is that? New Jerusalem. Read about it in Revelation 20, 21, and verse 22. New Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem. Old Jerusalem was made by the man's hands. New Jerusalem is going to be made by the Lord himself. 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. I think Sarah was 90 and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Wherefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so, may, may, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. 
Now ask yourself a question. Are the Jews as like the stars in the sky and the sand by the seashore? Uh, no, they're not. You know, the thing is, you should look at all the promises that God made to Israel and ask yourself, what people fulfill all those promises? You know, the black Hebrews will say, well, you know, we was in slave ships. That's their claim to fame. What about all the other pro uh, prophecies and promises? They don't fulfill them. You think about it. The Jews don't fulfill them. The Japanese don't. The Chinese don't. So who does? Think about it. You know what promises the Jews fulfill? The promises of Cain and Canaan and Esau Edom. Those are the promises that they fulfill. Yeah. And they would call what I believe replacement theology. Yeah. Replacing Israel with the Antichrist. That's what replacement theology is. Verse 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, if you've never read a, a Genesis, you, you would, this stuff doesn't make any sense to you. Of whom it, uh, it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, not Ishmael. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. See, Abraham was told to, to sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham was willing to kill his, uh, his only son because he knew that God was able to raise him from the dead. Even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than their treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. And this is recorded in the book of uh, Exodus. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gibeon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also and of Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises 
stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire. There's a, two references to the book of Daniel right there. Escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made song, strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Oh, if only America and Europe would put to flight the army of the aliens, the heathen aliens. Verse 35, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Do you know that there is a resurrection and a better resurrection? And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. No, they didn't get high on weed. Oh, far out, man. That was some good stuff. I don't think so. No, they were stoned. They were sawn asunder. According to legends, the prophet Isaiah was put inside a log and sawed in two. They cut him in half. I don't know how true that is, but that's, that's the legend. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. You know what being destitute means? It means you have nothing. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Oh, if only the pre-tribbers would read this chapter. Oh, of course, they'll say, well, you know, that was for the Jews. And we're New Testament Christians. We're the bride of Christ. God would never beat up his bride. He just, he loves his bride. God's not a wife beater. He wouldn't let us suffer like that. You know what? Let those devils have their reward. I, I honestly, I have no use for the denominational church. Zero. You know what, people? Our righteousness is in faith and believing the promises of Christ. And let me tell you something. If you have the Holy Spirit, Listen to this. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So when you get these Hebrew Roots people saying, Oh, we got to keep the law. If they have the fruit of the Spirit, and they're led of the Spirit, and then they're filled with the Spirit, there is no law. The Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of the law. Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Yeah. Somebody tell the, the Noahides, Oh, that's right. They don't have the Spirit. they got to keep those laws that are contrary to Christ. Those laws exist only in the minds of the rabid ribeyes. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Guess what? Those clouds of witnesses are. That's going to be the cloud of glory that Christ comes in with his armies. In Revelation 1.7, it says, Behold, he, who, he, who is he? Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Yeah, and they're not going to be at the wailing wall, wailing.
Revelation 14, 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Oh, yeah. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Yeah. Hebrews 12.1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author of and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be worried and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, Oh, that America and Europe would strive against sin under their blood. Ah, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, the final solution against the Hollywood crowd. Verse 5, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, uh, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the love the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he received. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Oh yeah. But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Wherefore we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but, be, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness." We better be partakers of his holiness, people. If you're not, you're in trouble. Verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be ta turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And what? where do you get this holiness? Faith in Christ, people. That's the only holiness you're going to have. That's the only holiness I'd ever have. Verse 15, Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and whereby many be defiled. Verse 16, Listen to this, Lest there be any fornicator or profound person as Esau. But Esau was married. Why is he called a fornicator? Because he married the Hittite Canaanite women who were forbidden as marriage partners. That's why he's called a fornicator, even though he was called, they were called his wives. Get that through your head. You'll never hear that in a demon nominational church. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, 
He was rejected. God rejected Esau. And Esau rejected God. It was a two-way street, buddy boy. And then people today say, Ah, oh, well, you know, Esau, all he's got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and he's saved. I don't think so. He was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You ever heard the expression crocodile tears? They don't fool the Lord. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor into blackness and darkness and tempest, and the, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words which voice that they heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Well, what's it talking about here? It's talking about when Moses went up to the mount and was given the, the stone tablets of the commandments. Verse 21. Oh, you never read the book of Exodus? Well, of course, this doesn't make any sense. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Moses was afraid. But some of these devils have no fear of the Lord. Verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, not that earthly Sodom and Egypt over in the Middle East that's full of blood and wickedness. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refuseth, refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth also, but also heaven. And that is referenced in Revelation eleven nineteen, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of, the tes of his testimony, Testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Remember, they're talking about heaven here. There's also going to be an earthquake on earth, a bad one. And what about an earthquake on earth? Revelation 6, 12, And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Revelation 8, 5, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Oh, yeah. And then in Matthew 24, verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Matthew 24 is the end time chapter, people. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Hebrews 12 and verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word... Yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably 
with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. All right, let's go to 13, Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Somebody send the pre-trib rapture people a, a memo here. The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you. Yep, even those wicked people over in Washington, D.C., and Brussels, and the EU, and London. You know why they're there? Because God put them there. A pastor that I greatly respect said, Spirit, our rulers, our earthly rulers, are a reflection of a a reflection of the spiritual state of the people. You know why Washington, D.C. is evil? Because the people of the United States are evil. You know why Brussels rulers are evil? Ditto. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have then been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. What are we seeking? The new Jerusalem, people. Verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. See, good works follow faith. Verse 17, Obey them that have the rule over you. Of course, uh, you know, obey them in everything except for where it, the Lord commands you differently. You know, if, if the government says to kill your own children, well, you better obey the Lord where it says... Uh, Thou shalt not kill. Okay, but otherwise, obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account. Oh boy, can you imagine uh, the Clintons giving an account one day? Oh yeah. That they may do it with joy and not with grief, that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us that we... For we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace 
that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you and all the saints. They of Italy re salute you. Grace be with you all. Didn't know he was a southerner, huh? Grace be with you all. Amen. Written to the Hebrews from Italy by Timothy. Uh, who wrote the book of Hebrews? Personally, I think it was Paul, but, uh, you know, Timothy could have been the secretary or could have been Timothy himself. Who knows? Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course. So there you have it. This is the conclusion of the Tabernacle series. Like I say, click on my name, go to the home page, look toward the top, and it'll say Playlists. Look up the Wilderness series. Look up uh, Revelation chapter 12 revealed. Look up uh, Who is Jesus series. I got some a lot of old-time material, people. You don't have to wait for me to do new videos if you're really interested. I mean, I, I hope you all know that I'm not doing this for money. If I'm doing this for money, um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lousy job. That's all I can tell you. So, um, one day when YouTube deletes me, that's it. I'm off social media. That's it. Boom. Gone. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.